show the 5k put on the track over the mile Agnes Tyrock is miles back but she's in third and Hassan keeps looking over her shoulder we've rarely seen an athlete of such range of such heart and of such courage the former Ethiopian now flying the flag for the Netherlands at the end of what's been the best season of her career by far she's answered the questions can she step up to 10,000 and dominate the world yes she can Sifa Hassan is the world champion and what a run from the Tessan Gide. she thoroughly deserves that silver and Agnes Tirop repeats her bronze from two years ago what a podium but look at this acceleration from Sifa Hassan this is incredible she's going away from the Olympic champion the defending world champion Laura Muir in third Sege in fourth she's streaking away here from a world-class field Faith Kipyegon is desperately giving chase but we're watching something very very special here in the Khalifa International Stadium never in the history of the World Championships never in the history of the Olympic Games have we seen a man or woman win the 10,000 meters and the 1500 and it's going to be just outside the world record Kip Yegon takes the silver Sege the bronze 351.96 it's one of the fastest times we've ever seen it's a championship record and she's done a double that many people, that most people thought would always remain impossible. Five minutes then in the last World Championship final. So off they go. Michael Johnson quickly into that distinctive style in lane five. Cardinals running well inside him in lane four. And Cardinals is perhaps up, but there's not much to choose between the men and the stagger at the moment. Johnson is running though well on the but as he comes into the bend and he's perhaps gaining a little bit on Jerome Young outside him. Sandalai Perella of Brazil in lane seven is strong. And here comes Johnson running superbly around the bend as always. He's going to take the lead. Jerome Young in USA is second to Perella. But Johnson is stretching away from this field. Michael Johnson with Jerome Young in second place. All the runners close up behind him. But Michael Johnson is going away. Away from this field he goes. And he wins it. Perella comes through for second. Hardinas is third as Jerome Young ties up. And he's done it. He's got that world record. Michael Johnson, the three-time, now four-time world champion, the double Olympic champion at 200 and 400. He has the world record with that stunning 1932 in Atlanta for 200 meters. Now at last, surely the greatest ever 400 meter runner has completed his portfolio by taking the world record as well as achieving all these wins. A truly superlative run by Michael Johnson. And they get away this time. And Calvin Smith got a tremendous run. And Emmett King in lane two is ahead of Carl Lewis, I must say, at the moment. But Carl Lewis suddenly comes back and streaks for the line and gets there first. Well, well, Carl Lewis was down at 80 meters. Calvin Smith was up and Emmett King was up. But the man came good on the day. And really, he streaked for the line. Carl Lewis in lane three. And I think Alan Wells, the Olympic champion, may well have got fourth place. The best of the Europeans, but it's a one, two, three for the United States of America. Carl Lewis actually taking his second time. Beautifully composed. 21 strides. And there's never been a long jumper like this except for... Oh, wow! Look how near he is to nine meters, and I just have the distinct feeling that the long jump is over. In one jump, he brings a new dimension to the event, just as Bob Beeman did in Mexico in 1968, when Bob Beeman was assisted by altitude, and he says, what have I done, and how much have I got to do? Carl Lewis has leapt practi practically to the end of the pit, and it's eight meters and 55 centimeters. Meters. Carl Lewis already world champion at 100 meters and long jump and everyone in the stadium holding their breath and Carl Lewis's parents and sister here watching and Emmett King is going superbly in lane three Emmett King safely into the hands of Willie Galt look at this international hurdler 
go against the world's best sprinters. He's taking yards out of Christian Haas, the West German sprinter, and he's given the baton safely to Calvin Smith. What a runner around the bend is Calvin Smith, and already the American squatter in the lead. And looking good at Italy and the Soviet Union, but uh, Carl Lewis has the baton, and unless he falls over the third world championship is his, look for the run for the line, and it's Italy, I think, Pietro Mania doing exactly as I said he would, beating Britskin of the Soviet Union to the line. But and it's a world record, a world record, and one should have expected it from such a squad. But 37-86, the first time that 38 seconds have been broken. What a fitting triumph for Carl Lewis, that he should win the 100 meters, that he should win the long jump, and then bring home this quartet of American sprinters. And on top of victory, a world record. Rojas, not leading, because we had that brilliant 14.89 by Shanika Ricketts. Second round, can she improve on 14.60? Oh yes, oh yes! She's teasing us. <laughs> A world record and the gold in Tokyo. A world record and the gold in Belgrade. That was massive. Have we got another? Oh, that is ridiculous. She just makes it look so straightforward. She really does. She is miles into the lead, but how far is it? Well over 15. <laughs> the world lead. 1547. She's only three centimeters shy of the championship record held by Initz Kravats back to Gothenburg in 1995. Maybe trying to pour on the pressure in the closing stages. Tanui, Jaylan, the defending champion, trying to come wide on the outside, just as he did two years ago. But Farah's holding the inside. Jaylan's trying to strike. Tanui's in third place and the gaps are opening up. Farah looks a touch anxious. Jaylan's done nothing in the last two years. Can he produce another lightning finish? Farah strikes for gold. He's holding on. Jaylan's trying to close as he did two years ago, but Farah's done it. The Olympic champion is the world champion. Jaylan takes second. Tanui came across, I think, for the bronze. They played into his hands. Jaylan had a go on the last lap, but it wasn't to be. The speed he's got over 1,500 metres brought Mo Farah across the line in first. He was pushed, he was tired, but in the end, he was just too quick, and he now has the only global title missing from his collection. But is in third, through. and Legat is trying to come. Koech still on Farah's shoulder. The Briton is trying to dig again. He knows that Koech is there. Soy is trying to come wide on the outside. Has Farah got it off? Koech is digging in, but so too is Mo Farah. The 10,000 meter champion is going to do the double. Farah wins. A brutal, brutal sprint on the line. He held on really well. Koech was coming, and at one stage, it looked as though the powerful Kenyan was going to overhaul Farah. Once again, he had the sprint, and try as they might, at the moment, they just can't beat him. Away they go safely this time, head down. Veronica Campbell is running very well, so in lane two, Tori Edwards. And Campbell is up on Stanley Richards at the moment. Felix is behind them. Coming to home straight, but Felix getting into a running now. Felix and Campbell going clear the rest of the field with Tori Edwards in third place. And here comes Alison Felix. Alison Felix is going to win this by a huge margin. Alison Felix wins it. Monica Campbell in the second place and Tori Edwards in third. And a fantastic time there. 21.82. The 21-year-old American has improved from a lifetime best of 22.11 to join the elite list of competitors who've broken 22. Oh, Gardner's off brilliantly, the rest of all. But look at Shelley and Fraser Price now coming through the field. Still Gardner in second place. And it's all over about. 
It's Shelley and Fraser Price. It's very close for second. Oh, Jorge dipping very well at the line there, but 10.72 for Shelley and Fraser Price. A very, very clear win. Of course, she was the favourite, but she was away so well, just behind Gardner, and then streaming away from the field. A slight headwind. A Hori and Jetta, I think, have taken the other medals, but it was a very, very clear victory. You don't get those quite so often in women's sprinting, but Fraser Price. What a time, too. It's officially 10.71, easily the fastest in the world, and only a hundredth of a second outside her personal best. Ahori, 10.93, Jetta coming back to form at 10.94. Well, off they go, and look for Felix in three, and Shelley and Fraser Price. Fraser Price is storming away on the athlete's outsider, and Felix has pulled up. Oh, what a tragedy for her, but out front, it's Fraser Price who's leading the way. It's uh, Ahore further outside, and Okagbari. Those are going to be the medalists, and it is the double for Shelley and Fraser Price. Dipping, I think, uh, Ahore gets second, and Okagbari third. It's very fast at 22.19. It's the double for the flyer from Jamaica. They're off in the 4 by one for women. Tamo for the USA in lane five with Carrie Russell for Jamaica outside her. Russell certainly has gone very well indeed for Jamaica and hands over ahead of the USA. Running down the back straight, it's Anderson for the US and Stewart, the most experienced runner for Jamaica. Those two teams looking outstanding at this point. Oh, there's a problem for the US. They've messed it up and it's leaving Jamaica well clear. Calvert will hand on to Shelly Ann Fraser Price on the last leg for Jamaica. Well clear of the rest of the field. Here is one of the heroines of these championships in Moscow. Shelly Ann Fraser Price going to complete the treble. Wins by a streak. It's frantic behind. And it's France just dipping ahead of USA. I'm not sure if the USA will stay because there was a big problem early on. But what a huge margin of victory. What a triumph. What a time, too, at 41.29 for the Jamaicans. That's a national record. Only the USA have ever run faster. McLaughlin goes in lane five. Ball just inside her, and McLaughlin pulling away from the Dutch woman. Remember, they're both undefeated this season. We've got Mohammed going fast on the outside, already past Woodruff, and closing down on Rizarkova. McLaughlin's gone storming past Dalila Mohammed. Femke Bowl trying to get in the mix for a podium finish, but this is about McLaughlin and it's about the clock. Remember, they are the three fastest we've ever seen, and McLaughlin is in front by miles. Watch the clock 51 41 is the world record. This is utterly staggering. Take a moment to savour this. We're watching a once in a generation athlete performing at the peak of her powers and it is a new world record Femke Ball takes the silver to Lila Mohamed the bronze people in the stadium are on their feet they're stunned they're utterly stunned and so is she she has smashed the world record how could she be that far clear from the second and third fastest athletes ever we may never we may never see her life again, and we should savour every single second of this. What Varholm did in Tokyo last year, McLaughlin has done, and then some, here in Eugene. They weren't that far away from the world record. Speaking of world records, Duplantis, is it on? Oh, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Could we finish any other way than with a world record from the greatest pole vaulter our sport has ever seen? He cannot believe it. You could not script that any better. They're away. Terrific start by Daniel Bailey. Usain Bolt, though, getting into his running. Here he comes. Usain Bolt, challenged by Tyson Gay. Usain Bolt, two clear meters. Tyson Gay in second place. And in third place, the Safa Pearl. 9.58! Smashing the world record! Unbelievable!
He's done it again. A year later, rewriting the world record again. That is the most incredible piece of sprinting the world has ever seen. Absolutely breathtaking. He didn't just break his world record, he absolutely shattered it. Is there anything this man is not capable of? We've just seen something that is just remarkable. But away safely this time, and here's the big man already up on Edward, already up on Clark. The rest of the field have been left behind. Fast run by Mullings and Spearman inside him. But here comes the great man, Usain Bolt, charging down the straight as best they can. The other men are trying to follow him. Mullings and Spearman, Spearman finishing fast. Bolt wins. Bolt wins. And Bolt has smashed his own world record. Just as he did in Beijing, he gets world records in both the 100 metres and the 200 metres. It was 1930 in Beijing. It's 1920 here. We dare to dream, and he has provided an epic moment once again here in Berlin. This man is just out of this world. The entire stadium were on their feet. He was miles clear, and then it was just a question. Surely not another world record. Oh, yes, and by a tenth of a second. Jamaica led off by Steve Mullins. He's gone off well on uh, Canada outside him. The British team have also gone well. Williamson passing on to Tyrone Edgar. Little to choose between the leading teams. Britain possibly slightly in the lead, but now the two big Jamaicans come. Here's Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt has got the baton. Trinidad inside him. Usain Bolt will pass to Asafa Powell. Great Britain have Harry Aikens on UT, but it's Caribbean time. It's Asafa Powell for Jamaica. It's Richard Thompson for Trinidad and Tobago. Britain take third place. Japan are fourth. Then Italy and Canada. Behind them, Brazil. And another brilliant run. For once, it wasn't a world record, but it was a staggeringly good performance. 37-32. They have broken the championship record.